So I go on the presentation of yesterday. Maybe you remember it was my last uh, slide yesterday about uh, sodium, uh, so about sodium water reaction. So up to this uh, slide, you have seen yesterday some more details about the pollution source, and we have seen already this morning how we can uh, uh, deal with this uh, pollution. But now I'm going to show you some points, and there was one question about tritium this morning. So. Here you have the, the detail about the sodium water reaction, okay? And uh, of course, when you introduce the sodium, yeah, uh, when you introduce water, you produce soda and hydrogen, but also uh, there is an equilibrium between sodium and uh, between sodium and soda to produce to dissolve oxygen uh, and hydrogen in the in the in the sodium. So this uh, equilibrium uh, reactions dep uh, depends on the sodium temperature and also the, the hydrogen partial pressure in the cover gas. There is an equilibrium. It's more or less uh, complex, but generally we consider that we are, when we are at a t high temperature, let's say above 400 degrees Celsius, uh, we have uh, well, 410 exactly. We consider that all the soda, uh, sodium hydroxide, sorry, is converted into, is dissolved, and uh, contributes the uh, increase of the oxygen, oxygen and uh, hydrogen uh, content in the sodium. So, of course, when uh, sorry, What's that? Ah. Okay, okay, thank you. And so uh, we have this, uh, we have this uh, uh, chemical reactions, and uh, I would say that, uh, as I told you yesterday, there is a, a risk of uh, propagation. Due to the impact, due to, due to the impact of uh, steam and uh, inside the sodium, it's like uh, you can impact the neighboring pipes, and you can have a propagation and multiplication of the leaks. So this is an event which has to be taken into account. Um, okay, but uh, you know, on the reactors, there are some specific procedures in order to avoid this uh, propagation. Of course, first a good detection of this event, and then a good detection of this event, and then in a second step, uh, of course, some management of the situation, let's say, like the Im immediate draining of the water, then you introduce nitrogen, okay, in order to compensate the, the pressure, we say, in order to avoid the ingress of sodium on the water side, and then you have a possibility, but not automatically, draining of the sodium, okay, for various reasons. So we have developed these rules of operation uh, for the reactors, uh, particularly for Super Phoenix, and uh, they, are, they were considered as uh, reliable uh, methodologies to avoid any uh, subsequent uh, accidental situation. So, for example, well, Super Phoenix, we never faced uh, during 12 years uh, uh, sodium water interaction, okay, no leak. Uh, on Phoenix, we had uh, five, five uh, incidents with a very few amount of water, let's say below, uh, maximum was uh, four liters, uh, four liters, but there was not, I would say, very incidental uh, situation uh, induced by the pressure wave, for example, of this kind of things. Okay, here you have this uh, loop. This is a, a very good reference from Whittingham. It uh, indicates you the kinetics of decomposition. It's, uh, it's tra translate into half-life of the sodium hydroxide. Okay, so it indicates the the kinetics, in fact, of uh, the kinetics of conversion of sodium uh, hydroxide. So this paper also takes into account uh, activities. Uh, uh, down in uh, U.S. and also in uh, Russia by uh, Fyodor Koslov. Uh, one point, here you have the wall. 
uh, you have the, the wall here, you have the sodium, uh, intermediate sodium, and uh, on the right side, you have the water side. As I told you, we have a treatment of the water, particularly to limit the corrosion. The corrosion. For that, we used the, uh, we used uh, hydrazine uh, N2 H4. And, H4, sorry. and uh, so this, um, there are some other solutions also with uh, different products because uh, hydrazine now is considered as maybe uh, potentially dangerous for health and so on. But hydrazine is, uh, is, is used, okay? And you have a production, so you have a, here on the surface a production of magnetite and what we call uh, native hydrogen and the interface between the metal and the, and the metal and the magnetite. And a part of the hydrogen move, uh, go through the metallic and go in the secondary loop, the se secondary sodium, and another part go in the water side. But at the same time, the hydrazine is not very stable, thermo uh, thermally stable uh, product. So you produce also with hydrazine a sm small amount of uh, hydrogen. So it means that you have a total amount of hydrogen, and in fact, you have a difference of content, and so a difference of what we call partial pressure on hydrogen on between the water side and the sodium side. So it means that we have a diffusion through this uh, wall from the water side to the, to the secondary side. So you have a source, and this is this hydrogen source we need to reduce and to maintain a background level of hydrogen as low as achievable in order to be able, in case of sodium water reaction, to detect as soon as possible the, the sodium water interaction, okay? In order to avoid very quickly, for example, what I said previously, propagation from one pipe to the uh, neighboring pipes. So, important thing we did uh, for example, how to measure this hydrogen source? It's, uh, by, it's easy. Uh, it's, uh, you stop, in fact, uh, where the hydrogen is going in the cold traps, okay? It's trapped in the cold trap. So if you want to see what is the source, the best way is to you shut down, you stop your cold traps. And what happens, of course, what you can notice is an increase, an increase of the uh, hydrogen content in the secondary. So this part of the is uh, useful to know the hydrogen source, and after that uh, you you know also what is the impact also on the on the pollution, and also maybe on the release of tritium also because the tritium uh, I will show you after uh, comes from the primary circuit and go through the walls of the intermediate. You know that generally hydrogen, huh? hydrogen, prosium or tritium as a property is going through the walls, okay? This is the only element that is able to, to go through the, through the walls at a high temperature. So it's important to know this source. And the second part of the curve here, you can notice, we restart the cold traps. And when you restart the cold traps, you decrease the hydrogen content again to reach again the background level when you have equilibrium between the source and the, and the trapping. Uh, so it means that in this second part, you are able also to calculate, to measure the efficiency of the cold trap, okay? So this is, we use periodically, periodically, the, uh, periodically uh, we use this uh, strategy to follow the efficiency of the cold trap. Another important point, you can imagine that when the thickness of the wall increases due to the magnetite, the diffusion of hydrogen through the wall is modified because the thickness is increased. So there is, a, you can, we have, a, we have a, a, a thickness of magnetite. It is a very stable, okay, uh, magnetite. Uh, but nevertheless, we want periodically, in order to keep the good performance, we, we have a chemical treatment of the, of the, on the water side in order to eliminate this uh, small, very small layer of magnetite. Okay, here you, you have another scheme where you have here, the, this is a primary. Here you have the AHX wall. Here, ah, sorry. Here you have the, 
in yellow, this is a secondary, secondary loop. Here you can see the, this is the wall of the steam generator on the, between the sodium and the water, okay? And uh, what happens? We have uh, an exchange of hydrogen between the primary and the secondary system because uh, of the possibility to have permeation. But you have also a source of tritium on the, on the primary circuit. There are two, we consider that normally there are three, but two, in fact. Source one is the boron, which produces a, a small amount of uh, tritium, and the second one is the ternary efficiency of plutonium. You have production of, of tritium. There is another one if you have some lithium impurities in the sodium, of course, you have a small amount, but it's negligible. We consider it's negligible. So you have this source of tritium, and even if you have a uh, transfer of hydrogen from here to the primary, we uh, you can have tritium from the primary to the secondary. Uh, and uh, one point, we measure, we know the concentrations, and we are able, like uh, when you have two, two uh, r uh, vessels with water, it depends on the level of the, <laughs> of the level of the vessel, you can have transfer in one direction or, or in the other direction. Everything depends on the partial pressure. Okay, so the tritium, so you can imagine that here in the secondary, I explained you that we trap the hydrogen in order to maintain a very low hydrogen content in order to detect as soon as possible a sodium, uh, water, uh, sodium water interaction. But at the same time, when you trap hydrogen at this level, uh, we trap also the tritium. Yeah, we trap the tritium. It's good for the balance of tritium, we release less tritium from a, fast, uh, from a sodium fast reactor than from other systems if they are equipped with the steam generators. In fact, uh, we don't like too much corrosion phenomena, but in this particular case, due to the source of hydrogen coming from the steam generator, I would say, we trap also the tritium. So it's a quite interesting positive effect of the corrosion, okay? Uh, and why I say that is, you know that for Astrid, we, de we decide also to study uh, another option for the energy conversion system. In fact, instead to have uh, water, we have uh, nitrogen gas, and we have developed, uh, uh, we have developed a, a Brighton cycle. But if you have a Brighton cycle, you have no more corrosion, okay? So you have no more hydrogen. So you are not able to trap the tritium because the level of tritium and maybe some traces of hydrogen also are lower than the, okay, than the solubility for, for a cold trap. So in, we have developed, strange idea, but we have developed a strategy to inject in the secondary sodium a very small amount continuously a small amount of hydrogen in order to reach right level and then to trap, to trap, in order to trap the tritium. So it means that for Astrid, one of the duties of the cold trap is to trap this injected hydrogen added uh, specially to trap the tritium. Yes, you understand? Uh, so it's a very strange. So we did that uh, quite recently. We did a PhD and developed the process uh, up to two years ago. Okay, so uh, what about the tritium? So uh, here you can see a scheme of a scheme of the uh, a scheme a general scheme of the circuits. You can see here the primary circuit. You can see the, the core source of hydrogen tritium uh, of tritium here. We have, uh, for example, for the primary here you have not integrated, but it's just a principle. Uh, here you have two cold traps, for example and uh, you, we have a possibility to trap a part of the tritium in the primary cold traps, but you have also diffusion here and transfer of tritium from the primary to the intermediate circuit, okay? So we have uh, cold traps on the secondary loop, okay? And one part of also of the hydrogen and tritium, uh, you know that there is a, uh, an equilibrium at the free level of the sodium in the pumps, secondary pumps, for example, you, you have a, what we call sievert, 
uh, Sievert law, you have an equilibrium between the liquid phase and the gas phase, and you have some equilibrium and some hydrogen and tritium go from the sodium bulk to the, to the gas, okay? And so, here, you have also a possibility to have a transfer of tritium from the secondary circuit to the water side and to the environment, okay? So it means uh, we have different transfer, we have different transfer phenomena, and uh, we have different uh, equilibriums at the surface, as I told you, cold trapping and so on. We have developed a code called QTIM. QTIM is dedicated to the balance of tritium in the wall reactor. Okay, so it's a very interesting approach. We are not alone because there is a code, for example, which was developed by GAEA. We did some benchmarking uh, activities on that. Uh, the name of this code was TTT, tritium transfer. Mm -hmm. I don't remember, but uh, <laughs> it's based on the same principle. It's a very chemical engineering approach with the balances of, uh, of the material. Okay, so, uh, so uh, different phenomena. Okay, uh, you understand permeation through metallic walls, crystallization of tritium. It's not tritium, it's uh, hydrogen and tritium, in fact, huh? because it's always hydrogen. No? Tritium or, or normal prosium is, uh, is the same. Okay, so we have this uh, model called QTIM, and uh, we, we, uh, we use that for two main objectives. First is to establish the release of the tritium to the environment. Even if it is slow, we have to follow some rules uh, and uh, but, uh, for nuclear facilities, and we need to demonstrate that we are lower than the uh, uh, authorized value. And also, it's useful also to calculate the inventory of tritium in the cold traps, because the cold traps accumulate that and it's important for the, the, for the when you have to remove uh, the cold trap. This is a part of the answer for the question of this uh, of this morning. Okay. Uh, other parts for transfer. Uh, what are the transfer at the level below below the slab in the primary circuit? You know that we have a free level of sodium, argon, and the slab with the rotating plugs for manutation and so on. Uh, I will come back on this point uh, this afternoon. And uh, you have uh, uh, here the, the slab. So it's important because aerosols in the cover gas have consequences on the heat transfer between, uh, between the sodium bulk and the slab. And uh, for that, we have an impact of the heat transfer on the, yeah, there is convection in the gas and you have an impact of the presence of aerosols on the emissivity and on the heat transfer. So, uh, but generation of aerosols that contribute to make the gas less or more or less uh, transparent, absorption, and then uh, also this evaporation can have also some consequences, consequences on the deposition of uh, aerosols in the upper part, because you know that we have some uh, narrow gaps uh, uh, narrow gaps in the upper part, uh, particularly with the rotating plugs and particularly with the what we call control plug or uh, above core structure. Uh, okay, so we have developed a model to study the transfer of aerosols uh, from the uh, in the cover gas. It depends of uh, we have some laws with adimensional numbers, Sherwood, Grashoff to simulate the natural convection and uh, Schmidt and so on. So we have some reference uh, relations, but there are some other phenomena because uh, in fact, we have several phenomena of deposition, okay? It's, uh, it's not so, it's not just only a condensation, you can have electrophoresis and so on. I don't go in details, but the deposition phenomena are more or less uh, complex to, to model. And the above, here you can see on the scheme, above the, above the, the slab, uh, we have also some systems to trap the, uh, the sodium, okay, the sodium aerosols in order to, uh, the, con the sodium condensates and come back in the, in the, in the vessel. Uh, on Super Phoenix, we made some uh, very funny study. Uh, there were some questions about the aerosols. We developed a system 
not in the <coughs> primary vessel, but in the external vessel for storage of the fuel assemblies in order to characterize these uh, aerosols and the comeback in the sodium. We developed through the slab a system <coughs> to fish, a fishing technique, I would say, to go on the surface and to sample the aerosols which are deposited on the sodium surface, extract it, and uh, sent to the laboratories, thanks to the tight uh, system. So one, one expert was uh, with uh, visualization mean, and the other one was uh, moving the, the, the fishing party, okay? And so um, I was participated to this fishing party in Super Phoenix. <laughs> Strange activity. Okay, so, uh, so it's important because aerosols have an impact on viewing technologies in the cover gas, because we have also possibility to, to view. Impact on thermal insulation performance also, because if you have a, a deposition in the upper part where there are some uh, insulation. Impact on contamination and dosimetry also. Why? Because cesium has a higher volatility than the sodium. So if you have a rupture, pin rupture, the cesium you will have some kind of enrichment in the cover gas and deposition. So it's, this point has to be known, particularly uh, for the decommissioning, of course, but maybe sometimes for the, during the operation, particularly if you have a lot of pin ruptures. Uh, in Super Phoenix, we didn't have, for example. But for experimental reactors, it's important to know that you have a dosimetry in the upper part. Um, Okay, about sodium fires, this is other aerosols. And uh, here, it, it, this is just an illustration. He, he, if you have a pipe, you can have, you know that we have two kinds of fires. It's, uh, you can have uh, sodium, which is uh, on the surface of the ground, okay? But you can have also fragmentation. Fragmentation due to the leak, it was the case, for example, in Monju in uh, December 1995. And uh, you, 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 if you spread uh, the, the uh, sodium in two aerosols, you, you have, uh, of course, a more intense uh, production of aerosols. And uh, what is important is to know is that you produce, after very soon, you produce sodium peroxide. You produce sodium hydroxide because of the humidity, okay? Every, and you have also uh, carbonation you have a carbon dioxide in the air, and so this is a positive effect, only positive effect, okay, of the, for the carbonation of aerosols. It means if you have a safety assessment of the release of these aerosols in the atmosphere, if you convert, thanks to the high CO2 content uh, in the air, 400 ppm currently in the atmosphere, you convert uh, very quickly, the sodium hydroxide into sodium carbonate. And so, uh, it's important for that. We, so, we, we have developed some studies about the kinetics. We work with uh, Indian uh, colleagues from Indira Gandhi Research Center. We did a uh, lot of experiments with a variation of some parameters like uh, humidity, humidity, carbon dioxide, in order to understand, to have a good understanding of the propagation. Then, this model was introduced in our model in Kalarash, uh, in order to study um, uh, with atmospheric dispersion code, okay, atmospheric dispersion code, to model the propagation of these aerosols and to check if at the boundary of the site, site boundary, if we have converted uh, all the aerosols into sodium carbonate. If you have converted all the sodium carb uh, into sodium carbonate, of course the impact on the neighboring, on the neighboring uh, part of the uh, site is much lower. There are some rules very well established uh, with uh, organizations in terms of impact of sodium hydroxide or sodium carbonate release. Uh, okay, so we introduce also this model. It is not only a problem for the outside, but also internally in the reactor. So we have a model uh, called the FEMIX, uh, which uh, was used in the past, and now we, uh, we introduce this fragmentation in a Neptune CFD code. Uh, we do that in partnership with EDF, French uh, EDF, uh, even now, okay? 
But uh, we, we are studying uh, a key point is the influence of fragmentation. Fragmentation. And for this objective, uh, for this objective, sorry, uh, we are doing some experiments of fragmentation. Thanks to the very similar properties between um, uh, water in terms of density and viscosity, uh, we model, a strange idea, but we model the fragmentation of the sodium with the water, in fact, because uh, it is a big advantage of sodium with regard to this particular point. <laughs> and uh, we, we, have, uh, we did that at various flow rates in a facility called Jetser in, uh, in Calarache. And now we have uh, another uh, par, uh, par, uh, collaboration with EGCAR in terms of fragmentation of sodium. We, frag uh, we have a fragmentation of sodium uh, without oxygen. We study the fragmentation. Of course, with a very limited amount of sodium, but thanks to the adimensional numbers on a SORG, and there is some specific uh, adimensional numbers, we are able to extrapolate the behavior at, with uh, very small flow rates thanks to the experiments we did with water, to larger leaks. So it's interesting uh, approach, methodological approach, in terms to move from a uh, small amount with sodium to larger amount, thanks to some experiments done with, uh, with water. And the second point is we will st uh, also do the same experiments in presence of oxygen in order to check what is the uh, impact of combustion into the on the uh, uh, combustion, on the um, dispersion, and on the effects induced by the, by the fragmentation on the sodium fire. And we introduced this data on our side in, uh, in Neptune, in the Neptune facility. We did also a study, sorry, yes, just to, to yeah, Neptune uh, here. So, uh, we have done a lot of studies also on the carbonation kinetics. When you have a, an aerosol, we have studied in Kadarash what is the evolution and how we, can we model. You can see here, uh, you can see here uh, the sodium, a layer of carbonate, and so evolution of this uh, aerosol from sodium hydroxide to sodium carbonate. So it's purely chemical engineering uh, approach, what we call a shrinking mod core model. It's well known in, uh, by chemical engineers, uh, this thing, for many other applications. And so we published, uh, we published on this uh, activity. Here you can see it's strange. This is an uh, aerosol of sodium after contact with carbon dioxide. It looks like uh, a shell. <laughs> yeah, under sodium repair, under sodium repair, um, this is, uh, so here we are, maybe it's, uh, uh, yes, important thing, uh, because in, when you have, uh, could be in the, my presentation of this afternoon, but nevertheless, so if you have a, uh, a, a leak somewhere, okay, you can see here that we have a, a distribution of dosimetry everywhere, and uh, here you have also interaction with, uh, between the sodium and, uh, and the surface and materials. And uh, we develop uh, during the, we develop a methodology to be able to have everywhere inspection. And why I say that is because also sometimes we have developed a technology in order to clean up the surface below the level of sodium and, uh, and we have also the possibility, we did that for the intermediate exchanger of super phoenix. There was a, what we call a bell. We empty the sodium insi inside and we repair, we repair the intermediate exchanger somewhere. Okay, here on the right side, you can see here, this is just uh, an illustration to show that when you design a new reactor, uh, it's important to foresee first to think about the in-service inspection, to decide which wells have to be controlled. The, of course, you, you have not to demonstrate it's necessary to control all the wells because it would be a, a huge uh, and crazy, maybe, uh, strategy. But uh, for some of the wells, it's very important to check periodically the health 
uh, the health of this, uh, of this world. And this is the reason why we develop, we have to demonstrate that uh, you s we select the places where we have to do some control. We have to know what will be the evolution of the dosimetry in this area. We have to develop also the strategy to transfer the sensors uh, for in-service inspection uh, close to the weld to be controlled. Okay, so we do. This is why we we have developed uh, some viewing technologies in order to detect uh, cracks uh, cracks on the on the welds in order to demonstrate to the safety authorities that our the reactor is in good uh, in good health and. Uh, Okay, so here this is just an illustration. Of course, you need to develop not only uh, un, uh, sensors, but also the harms, the harms to have a remote uh, control of, the, of these parts. Okay, and easy, this is uh, one important uh, point, is the, uh, the access has to be taken into account from the early stage of the project. Honestly, in the, I would say, all the reactors like uh, Phoenix and Super Phoenix and maybe others, the people tried to find the solution when they faced the problem. And it was not so obvious sometimes. Eh? We faced some difficulties. We did, but uh, it was not so easy. So now the new st the strategy is to effectively, when you design a reactor, is to think really about the necessity to inspect and eventually and potentially to repair if it is necessary. If of course, the, the event has been uh, anticipated. Uh, just some points. Uh, uh, here you can see the. this is not a steam generator. This is the exchange between the secondary sodium and uh, uh, to produce electricity. So as I told you, we have developed also um, a Brighton cycle, OK, with a pure nitrogen. What we have to say, uh, to know, is that effectively, after that, uh, no, no problems of sodium water interaction, eh? of course. But uh, we lose some uh, efficiency, okay, in the thermodynamical uh, balance of the intermediate circuit of the energy conversion system. Uh, thermodynamic, for a Rankine cycle, we can reach around, let's say, uh, 42%. With this system, we, can, we are between 37 and 38 but 4% uh, compared to, to, to uh, 40, 42, it's uh, much less than, uh, hey, it's not negligible. This is the reason also why there is uh, an interest, even in CEA, about uh, energy conversion system based on supercritical carbon dioxide. You know that there are some studies about these systems in order to develop a more efficient, a more efficient energy conversion system based on uh, supercritical carbon dioxide. Uh, one thing here, you can see, when you have an exchange uh, between uh, coming back to the sodium gas exchange, we need to have a very efficient exchange between the sodium and the gas. Okay, it's, le it's uh, less obvious than uh, with the sodium water interaction. And so we have developed a new, uh, very uh, optimized uh, exchange between the sodium and the gas. And we did that particularly with some thesis. We work in partnership with Onera, which is a company of Toulouse, uh, which is, uh, you know, in Toulouse, uh, the main activity is not a nuclear, but it's a plane, Airbus, Airbus industry. And um, we work with them because they are very well, uh, uh, they are very high knowledge on this uh, thermal exchange in uh, some specific application. So we, we had consequences of uh, good, feedback from the aeronautic industry in this field. Okay, here you can see the exchanger we have developed. Me, uh, yeah. If I may, why, nit nit why did you choose nitrogen? Ah, there was, a, there was maybe better. Uh, there was nitrogen plus uh, helium, for example. There was a comparison. And at the end, we have seen that uh, maybe if we make a balance, the benefits to, uh, the benefits to add some to have a more complex uh, gas was not so obvious in terms of technology. Because for nitrogen, we know that uh, with Alstom, Alstom was involved in the project, we know that it was possible to have turbine uh, uh, very quickly. There was no challenge uh, with, uh, uh, with the carbon dioxide, for example. Uh, yes, but 
You remember the, the situation in France? Uh, our former president Chirac says that we need to have a street in operation in 2020. Yeah? Okay, so we are in 2022, but uh, we are looking. <laughs> so, but just uh, we consider also when you have to, in, uh, to select uh, some options, we have to uh, see how long we need for the development and qualification of these new technologies. For sodium supercritical carbon dioxide, we consider that it was not uh, in agreement with the planning. So maybe it's, uh, but it, you know that there are always some calculations and so on in order to, if we restart a project, I hope very soon, uh, maybe this option could be, could come back, okay? In the, mm. And uh, here you can see uh, by the, the shape of this exchange, uh, we test some mock-ups. If we have the opportunity to come to Cadarache, we have a, mock, uh, a loop where we test uh, various heat exchangers. So we test uh, a mock-up of 40 kilowatt, but uh, we have also designed uh, uh, an exchanger of 20 megawatt. Okay, 20 megawatt. Uh, it would be uh, this system would be. Uh, uh, it will be a modular concept. Just in case of uh, failure, we replace one module. Uh, we don't intend to detect where is the default. Okay, uh, too expensive. It's uh, better, more efficient to foresee a modular system and the change in case of uh, uh, fracture or something like that uh, to to change the, uh, the the to change the module. Okay. Uh, uh, we work with, uh, for some aspects, we work with uh, Rolls-Royce. Um, uh, here, electromagnetic pump. We work with uh, Japan to develop, uh, uh, we work with uh, Toshiba. But uh, in order to have our own uh, knowledge and particularly to test some potential uh, difficulties, we decided to work with uh, dynamic, uh, with uh, electromagnetic uh, pump developed in uh, in France. Uh, we developed uh, a module which is called uh, PEMDIN, and uh, this uh, uh, pump is 1,450 cubic meter per hour, so it's very uh, efficient. We did some studies, uh, modeled that, and particularly collaborate with uh, Riga uh, University of Latvia in Riga because they are experts in uh, magnetohydrodynamics and uh, particularly to study the effect of magnetohydrodynamics. When you have my MHD, what we call MHD, you can have uh, induced pressure drops due to some recirculations of the sodium. So we did uh, this exercise. We use uh, in Calarash uh, platforms, uh, platforms and as I told you, uh, with sodium we can use also some uh, for uh, for hydraulic test, we can use the water, okay? Uh, we can use the water. Here you can see uh, the facility where we have a, a simulation, uh, simulation of modeling of the primary circuit of uh, Astrid, okay? Here you can see another facility. It's not so easy, but for fragmentation, as I told you, for the sodium fire, fragmentation of water in order to study the, the, the fragmentation. And... Uh, we, we have a platform with, with water in Canarash. Here we have another, also, what we did uh, uh, to test uh, thermo uh, hydraulics in fuel assemblies. We have also a mock-up with water to, to study. We separate the pure effect of hydraulics with uh, thermo hydraulics in sodium. Okay, so here we have a facility also in Canarash to study the, uh, the, 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 fuel, uh, the fuel elements. Okay. And uh, Papyrus platform, uh, this is a large platform with, uh, equipped with many, uh, many experiments uh, dedicated to various applications. As I told you, to test the exchangers, to test the pump, to test uh, in-service inspection, uh, to test the cleaning, assisted cleaning process, and so on. We have a maximum amount of uh, inventory in this uh, facility of 300 tons, and now around 100 tons, other is... Uh, um, stored. Uh, we have more than 60 years of operation of this platform since the beginning to support uh, Rhapsody, Phoenix, Super Phoenix. 
and uh, we didn't have uh, any major events with uh, environmental consequences. Okay, so it means that sodium is not so, is not the devil. Huh? And uh, okay, you can see here some loops. Uh, sorry, some loops. about like okay, maybe uh, I spoke about uh, the ADEMO for sodium gas heat exchanger, PEMDIN for electromagnetic pumps, Mekana. It's uh, very new. Uh, it was uh, integrated uh, two years ago. Uh, particularly for in-service in inspection, Futuna is for uh, sodium leak detection and some others. And here, uh, the, my last slide, here you can see the, a loop which is called the Superfenec. It is used for education, education and training at our sodium school. Since 1975, we operate a sodium school, sodium and other liquid metals. So it means we have done uh, some sessions on lead bismuth, and also uh, we have uh, recently addressed also lithium, lithium for fusion. And uh, well, it's uh, very, I would say, it's built in order to have a good uh, exchange with the trainees uh, uh, for the students and so on. We have trained here uh, uh, many colleagues from uh, other countries, and particularly. Uh, uh, from uh, China, okay, China, from uh, Japan, uh, no, particularly fire brigade of uh, Kobe when we transport the sodium to Kobe, uh, Russia from BN 600 within the frame of TASIS program, European program, and also some others. Uh, uh, more than uh, 6,000 people were trained in this facility, in this uh, school, okay? Yeah, more than 6,000, yeah. In two years, it will be 50 years old uh, uh, school. Just a conclusion, so nothing to... I would say that uh, we went... Uh, well, sodium is a very attractive current. I hope you are now... Uh, you are convinced of this fact. <laughs> Even if the heavy liquid metals... Uh, personally, I have been involved in heavy liquid metals for, for uh, ADS, huh? okay? So uh, I know there are some advantages also. Uh, but uh, but uh, it depends on the application, in fact, what you want to do. Huh? So we can have different positions, and it depends. So it's a debate, but uh, <laughs> never finish. And so uh, we have a low activation of sodium. This is important point. Okay, uh, material corrosion is very low. We have some discussion this afternoon. Dosimetry is well mastered generally in our systems. Uh, Opacity due to opacity, but it's not specific of sodium. It's always uh, true for all liquid metals. We need to, to develop technologies based often on the ultrasonic technologies. Uh, thermal stress and some structure are well assessed, uh, but, uh, but effectively, uh, by liquid metal in a metallic structure, you have some impact. You need to address this environmental effect on the structures. Sodium water reaction, I think, is well mastered. Sodium fires, there are large efforts to mitigate these potential events. This is clearly the weak point of sodium, okay? I think that it's not really the sodium water, because uh, we are for able to master that and to use also this reactivity uh, for the treatment, for cleaning, and so on. And even in the steam generator, we consider that now it's uh, okay. But the sodium fires, we have always this uh, point to be addressed in terms of confinement, and it's, uh, the consequence is an increase of the cost also of the, of the system. Thank you. Thank you.